Hi friends, welcome to Wonderful Word Wednesday. I'm Barb Nemechek. Hello everyone, I am Jim Nemechek. Okay, Barbara, this week we have some unrelated items on the table. A glove, a flamingo pen, paper, salt and pepper, uh, and three different liquids in different colors. What are we talking about this week? Well, we're talking about friends this week. Actually, a teacher friend of mine suggested we talk about friends. Okay, that makes some sense. Uh, children and teens are about to start back to school. Uh, they may be going to a different school, or their friends may not be in the same class that they were last year. Mm -hmm. Well, and there are also adults who watch that might be lonely, and they may have opportunities coming up to make new friends where they go to work or where they go to church or perhaps places where they visit. And I guess you're going to tell me and the audience how all these unrelated items relate. Exactly, to friends. You see, friends go together, kind of like bread and butter, peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and banana. No, no, nothing goes with banana. Peanut butter and chocolate? Oh yeah, that goes. <laughs> Salt and pepper go together. They certainly look different than each other, but they still go together as friends. Certainly, uh, salt and pepper don't look anything the same. Uh, they have different colors and different textures, and they are both unique. Exactly. But when you put salt and pepper together and add them to food, it makes the food taste better. It's the same with good friends. Friends don't look the same, and when they are together, they feel better because they are happier and have more fun. Okay, I understand the theme you're on here about salt and pepper mm -hmm. and friendship. Uh, but how does pen and paper relate to friends? Well, pen and paper go together. But a piece of paper and a pen do not do much on their own. They just sit there. But when they work together, they can create a beautiful message or picture. Okay, I see where you're headed. So when friends get together, they can do much more. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't do certain things on your own if you're a child, you know, playing tag, playing board games, uh, playing baseball. Uh, if you're an adult, maybe may playing charades or playing ping pong or talking on the phone all takes more than one person. Exactly. Doing things with others opens up new opportunities for fun and friendships. Plus, if you have work to do, it helps to get the work done faster and easier. Many hands, light work. Of course. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, it says, Two are better than one. When they work together, they get much more work done. Now, having said the salt and pepper and the pen and paper, we have a single glove. Uh, what is that all about? Well, what goes with a glove? A hand, of course. Exactly. We need a hand in picking our friends. No, no, not that kind of hand. <laughs> right. And I bet the Bible has some advice on that for us as well. It definitely does. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, it says, Be friends with those who are wise, and you will become wise. Choose fools to be your friends, and you will have trouble. Well, that certainly makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think we should talk about how do you know if someone is wise or if they're a fool? Good idea. I think a good way is to watch other people's actions. You know that old saying, actions speak louder than words? For example, if a person says that they are your friends, but they never help you when you need it, or they only want things their way, then their actions are not showing that they are a good friend. And another example, of course, is if you see a person making fun of someone or using bad language or maybe gossiping, you know that they're not necessarily a wise person. They're people maybe you don't necessarily want to hang out with on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. If a person is there for you when you need them, they don't make fun of you, you can trust them, and they don't lead you into behavior that Jesus wouldn't approve of, then they are wise friends. I see next on the table we have three glasses labeled mm -hmm. wise, fools, and you. 
Exactly. This is going to be a way to show everyone what happens when you hang out with different people. The yellow glass is going to stand for your wise friends. Those are the positive influences in your life. And the blue glass represents the negative influences in your life. And of course, you are the nice clear water right there. So let me show you what I mean. Experiment time. Yes, yes. So your wise friends hang out with you and they brighten up your life. And they are a positive influence. Exactly. And then when you hang around with some people who may not be so wise. The negative side. Mm -hmm. It changes you. So I see something and you all see something obviously happened with the color in the glasses and the clear water has become green. Exactly. This experiment shows you how influences in your life can affect or change you. So be wise when picking the people with whom you spend the most time. Spend time with the people who love you. But Jesus still wants us to be friendly toward everyone. It's true that it's important to remember to be wise in picking our friends. But it's also wise for each of us to be a good friend to each other. Mm -hmm. We should treat our friends like we would want to be treated ourselves. I agree. Jesus modeled how to be a good friend when he came to earth. He showed love and kindness to everyone. It's important to note that Jesus did not hang out with purple perfect people. All people make mistakes. Jesus showed us that we should forgive others and not hold grudges. Certainly, Jesus is the best friend we will ever have. Mm -hmm. We know he is our best friend because of what he did for us. In John chapter 15, verse 13, it reads, No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus wants what's best for us. He's happy when we're happy, and he's sad when we are sad. Remember, you always have a friend in Jesus. He's always there with you. He's there for you even when your true friends can't be there. Your good friend might be busy or they might have their own problems and they won't be able to help you every time. But Jesus can help you every time. All you need to do is ask. Remember, Jesus is the rock where we can always rely on. Let's end with a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us so many great friends. A special thank you for sending us our good friend Jesus. Please God, help those people who are lonely and help us to pick wise friends and help us to be a good friend to others. And if you have intentions, you may add them here. Amen. Amen. Thanks everyone for joining us and thanks Julie for giving us our topic for this week. Uh, Good. Thank you friends for watching. All right. Bye. Bye now.